she is so anxiety ridden over the yeah. fear factor of you know what she could do. You're sitting there doing really good with butter and you're talking about a mistake that she made earlier. <sighs> What's going on? Big dog, a lot of energy. First six months, I had time to train. And then after that, started working way too much, not staying on top of the training. So the energy level is still puppy energy, explosive, and then she's gotten aggressive. This is how a scenario did happen, was her just sitting next to me and somebody came over just to pet her, and she snapped. At the dinner table, she snapped, because IE feeds her from the dinner table. <laughs> She's snapping, not biting. She's snapping, but then I had my nephew over a couple months ago, only seven years old, and I know to watch her. I keep her on her leash. And my nephew, I kept her by me, he was sitting playing, and then she slowly went over to him, like sniffing all the way around, so I was letting her do that. And then he was kneeling, and she sniffed up his back, and then she started like pushing on his head, and I stood up to you know, get between them and just gently get her in a different direction and she went full blown to like try and grab him. She didn't get to bite him or anything, but it was totally aggressive. The prong collar, I don't have the strength to get it pinched on and off of her. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go to the e-collar, but I bought one and it's a pain in the rear end. It's toggle up, toggle down, toggle over. So I did put it on her the one time because of her energy level. Sure. She drug me across the yard the other night. I took her out at night, which was stupid. I don't know, animal ran and she went after it, but drug me, so my arm is sore. But So that's why I wanted to go to the collar. I'm afraid to use it because I don't want to use it wrong. When we were walking, like I told her to come and I did the beep and it was like she instantly got fearful. She didn't know what it was or whatever and got fearful and ran to me. And my fear is that if I use it wrong, she's going to run the different direction and take me with her if I scare her with it. Now you could tell Butters is a sweet dog and her owners are more than willing and able to help. But she's a powerful, strong dog that has a really innate ability to be protective. And obviously because her size, she can be scary. But we need to make sure that these guys have control under any circumstances necessary. I want you to just uh, work her in this room, just on your healing and your basics. And I want to see how she does with you on the leash first. And then um, we'll get started from there. And let's just stop and yeah. ask her to sit. Put her place. Place. So give her pressure. Plus. Good. So when you ask her to place the first time, just give her pressure. Well, you're not gonna you're not gonna correct her when you ask her. You're gonna correct her if she doesn't immediately, pretty much like that. So you can place. Butter. Place. Just move forward a little bit. Reset Butter. her. Good. Now place Here. her again. Place. Place. So just pressure Place. up and hold it for a second. So you just want to get away from asking her to do the same thing over and over again because you're giving her opportunities to just ignore you. So it's not necessarily place, it's place, 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 place. Place. Good. So that's going to be new to her. That's why she's having a hard time with it. So you just want to make sure that when you ask her to do something that you follow through with it. If you take a template like that and you ask her to do something and then when she's ready to be done with it, she's gonna walk away. That's gonna be a problem. You see it right there, that's that's the problem. Having to keep trying to say it and she's right. not doing it. Place. There, pressure up. Place. Hold, release. So the micro is, is her not sitting when you ask her to. Yeah. But the bigger picture is, is the fact that when you ask her to do something, she's only gonna do it if it's convenient for her. If you can't get her to sit with hardly anything going on a little bit of stuff going on but not much right forget it we're, we're training we're training for reality we have an animal we put the animal in our house and we want them to coexist with us so if you want your dog to just dance around for food and do things because it's fun and silly for the camera and no ma'am mm -hmm. and yes sir and please and thank you please do this yeah. then your dog is going to do that the, your your obedience and your control more importantly your relationship is going to be spin in the drain all the time. When I ask a dog to sit, it's because I'm at a crosswalk. It's because there's another dog that's passing. It's because there's a mountain lion over there. If I want my dog to come, it's because there's a car. If I want my dog to stay, it's because X, Y, and Z. I don't want you to downstay for a cookie for four seconds. I want you to downstay while I enjoy my coffee and I can be with my dog. I also oh. want to make sure that when I tell you to sit, stay, because I'm opening up the door in a busy area and I don't want you to fly out. It's not because I have a cookie and it's cute and when you don't do it, I'm like, please, no, sir, no, 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 no. You're sitting 
because I don't want you to get hit by a car. I see all the time, like I was downtown the other day and somebody was asking their dog to sit and the dog was just too stimulated being at the crosswalk and they just asked the dog to sit and the dog's like, me? Nope, I'm not sitting, right? Yeah. And then they're like, eh, and they drink their coffee, sit. It's right. not a game. Right. Like people think it's a game. Like, oh, if my dog do doesn't sit, I'll try it again later. Or if they don't sit, I'll go back to the, the deli board and bring back a different type of uh, blue cheese this time that my dog may like. No, 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 you gotta take that seriously. If they don't sit, then they won't come back and they won't down and they won't stay. And all these things, we're doing it because they need to listen to us because they're animals. Can I ask a quick sure. question? She gets scared. She backs up into me and I, know, I can tell it's fear. She doesn't know what's going on, but we, haven't had any socializing since I've been working, but we used to always have people over, dogs. We'd have 12 to 15 at our house on a weekend. At that time, she was a puppy. She was great. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to be afraid, and I don't sure. need you to be protective. Right. Well, two things is if, if she feels like she needs to be protective, that's because of what we were just talking about. If you ask her to sit 100 times, she's like, you have no idea what you're doing. Therefore, I don't trust you. Right. So when she gets a fan, right. I'm not going for you for help. I, I'm <laughs> the one that's going to be helping because nobody is giving right. me good direction here. Right. So, and if it's the other thing where she's just a nervous dog because of her breed or because of who she is, it's a different story. But again, I think at the end of the day, it depends on like, if she gets nervous because there's a garbage truck, you can say, hey, come over here and sit and then let's heal and then let's do some things. But right now, when you ask her to do something, it means nothing. Place. Release. Good girl. Good, good, good place. place. There you go, just like that. Now hold it. Now she can't get up until you break her. When you ask her to sit, we have to talk about the three Ds, which is what I talk about often. Distance, distraction, and duration. The amount of time that you have her into a sit and the duration matters because if she's not used to sitting for long periods of time, you're gonna say, okay, five seconds is up. I'm gonna break you before you break yourself. Setting yeah. you up for success. I'm not yes. gonna wait for you to make a mistake because then we're gonna be in this vicious cycle. Okay, there's nothing going on. Let's add a fake dog with no heartbeat and just let it lay over there. That's, that immediately she went, whoa. Yeah. So that's one distraction. I'm not gonna bring three or four dogs in right now and say, figure it out, okay? And then the, the distance would, would be more applicable to maybe the dog getting closer or maybe you stepping away for a stay or whatever. But those are the three Ds that I tend to focus on and they go up in levels. If she does break out of it, do I repeat myself again and apply pressure again, obviously? I always tell people that dog training is a lot like being a, a chef. And the way that you make this dish will play and s taste similar to maybe the way I do it. Right. But right. everybody kind of has their own twist Different. on it, right? It's not, unless you're doing competitive obedience or something like that, it's not gonna look the same. And you ask her to sit and she sits and I mean, she immediately gets up, I wouldn't say anything, bang. If she's sitting there for 30 seconds and she decides to get back up, you might just say, ah, sit and give her a little bit more pressure. Okay. That's kind of like my, fairness that I bring to the table a yeah. little bit. So as you're training with her and you're holding her accountable, you will see within the next couple of days, her confidence will build. So okay. what you want to do is ignore her. So don't talk to her like that. If she's going, please help, please help, please help. And you're going, I'll help you. Uh, she doesn't know what the hell you're saying. You could be saying like, hey, we're leaving here and we're never coming back. She'd be like, yeah, let me come over to you. So you got to realize that, that she's not speaking English. So you're sitting here and I'm holding her and you're like, it's okay, it's gonna be fine. He's not a bad guy. And she's like, oh God, the world's ending. Right. right? So don't do that because you're, you're the, the less is more with dogs. So I just want to stop the video and just say thank you guys so much for watching my videos, being part of the No Bad Dog community. This is something special. I've been saying that for years. We're continuing to grow. I appreciate you guys a lot. If you guys are watching this and you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to my channel. We put videos out like this all the time. We work really hard at it. Leave a comment in the comments below. Like this video, support the channel. Appreciate you. We're working yeah. on the place command, which is the sit for yeah. her. One thing we were having a hard time yeah. with was her actually doing it the first time. So go ahead and stop and then ask her to, to place. 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 So that second time, I get an e-collar on you and just remind you. Place. It's such a habit, it's okay. Such so now good. what you want to do is pay her for the place. Just You can give her a little piece of that. Good you don't place. have to give her the whole thing. Good place. Just a little bit. And then here, let me show you. Watch, look at this. You take this and just give it to her. She's going to nibble this out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she just took the whole thing. Just take your treats and put them in your left hand and your other hand there. Yep. And then if you can take the whole leash and put it in your left hand, that would be better. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, now I want you to handle like this because I don't want the handling to be like a full-time job. We're constantly in fix-it mode where we're like, Butter's owner is really nervous when she's handling her. 
This is one thing we have to correct immediately. She's too big of a dog to have somebody go out and not have full capabilities and full confidence when handling the dog. Shoulders straight, head looking forward, and you just walk and go that route. It feels good. It feels really good. Yep. It feels so good. Yep. Heel. Isn't that nice? It felt good doing yeah. that. So all it, it is is different. Yes. I always equate it to when, like, when you're watching a scary movie, and then like this really suspense or anything suspenseful, and it like something happens, and then all of a sudden release. you release. Yeah. That's kind of what that is. Yeah. She's totally squirreled out already. You know, see how she's getting off? Because she's thinking the sound came from over there. Mm -hmm. So like, if you just put your arms down and don't worry about what she's doing, you wouldn't think that at all. Maybe she is a little suspicious about what that noise is. Yeah. But the more you kind of like feed into that, so you just be neutral and, and just- And that's what I do. I, I automatically know. pull in and yeah. yeah. Place. So that's what I mean is you start to get, and then it's hard to even talk to you because you're matched yeah. right with her. Now I'm gonna hold the continuous down and it's okay. gonna continually go to okay. her until she does it. And uh, I turned the sound box off because I didn't want to freak her out. So okay. come back this way. Yeah. Stop. And then ask her to place. Place. Pressure's on right now, and now it's off. Okay. So the goal of the remote collar stimulation at this level is for her to understand that that stimulation is coming from you. And then when right. she does it, it stops. Correct. Better touch. Pressure's on. Touch. Off. Place. Good. The reason why we do this is because we want her to understand the remote collar well. So she understands how to turn off the pressure. She understands that it's coming from you and it's not a correction. So what's the point? That's really usually the next question is what the heck's the point of this then? So and that it, I can touch her from far away. Right. Come. And you have the ability to go up and correct her if she decides not to listen. Right. And that's going to be the difference between Please. life and death for dogs off leash. Place. Pressure, release. Good. So let's do a stay. Can you stay? It's not very confident. Back into a place, sit. Place. Good. Pressure was on there too, sorry. So, so let's just tell her to stay. Stay. Nope. Do it differently. You got this. Stay. <laughs> Better. That was good. Stay. You don't have to change the tone of your voice, you just have to change the way that you say it. You just have to say stay. Stay. Instead of stay. So you, you had an evolution there. <laughs> you evolved. You went from can you please stay to stay to stay. If you guys haven't heard, we have created an official No Bad Dog Army Members Club. It's a very unique opportunity to join a community of dog owners such as yourself that are trying to learn. It's very empowering, it's very motivating, it's certainly inspiring. If you go in there, you guys will be able to see everybody helping each other out, uploading videos. You guys are also gonna get a ton of unreleased stuff from me, unreleased podcasts. You guys are gonna get full length videos. You're watching a 10, 15 minute video here on YouTube. We're releasing the full hour and plus all on there. It's $19.99 a month, it's super inexpensive. It's an official program that we're continuing to put stuff on there and growing. It's a lot of fun. Click the link in the description below to join. What is your thought on dogs meeting on leash? And that's something that we're gonna work on next, but I'll give you my theory behind it. When you're dealing with dogs, it, there's, there's two variations. There's your dog and what their variations are and the shades of things that they're okay with and what they're used to and the exposures that they've done. And then of course, once you figure that out, which takes some time, then it's the other dog that sometimes you don't even know. Dogs can meet on the leash and be fine, but it also, I've seen it a bazillion times. They're fine. You see two dogs walking downtown, they're sniffing each other, they're playing, and then you walk away, no problem. But there are certain dogs that are like, eh, you know, they get insecure and they get vulnerable because they're on a leash and it makes things worse and they try to escape and then they can't. Is there really any benefit to like, meeting other dogs on a leash or like just meeting new dogs in general or? The benefit is there's gonna be neutral dogs who just don't care if they're on a leash or they're hooked up to a helicopter. They do not care <laughs> Yeah. at all. They're friendly, 
neutral dogs and they are gonna be friendly with every dog they see no matter any circumstances you give them, no matter what. You know, if you have that dog, you never even think about whether your dog's on the leash or not. Right. Ever. Right. You don't ever, but people who are working with reactive dogs or have a reactive dog, those are things you consider when you move forward. Yeah. Just know that if your dog isn't overly friendly with every dog that they see all the time, it's not a problem. It's not a flaw. It's just their personality. And we need to learn to respect that and have realistic goals moving forward. It's okay. Good girl. Good job, Butter. Yeah, wiggle butt, wiggle butt, wiggle butt. So what do you think of that? I loved it. That was a real laugh. That's what anxiety is, is thinking of the worst case possible scenario, which is ripping this fence down and dragging the puppy out by her ears. So there's gonna be certain dogs that she's gonna be okay with. Mom, I like her. Yeah. So, younger female. Good, that is good. Thank you. Thank you for your help. That was so good. I'll go back and play. Good. And we're gonna do it again. Good. I'm just gonna heal around you. Good. Seats. Good. Cushy. Yep. That's why we're working on it. You just gotta get these kinks out. You're gonna come back and just go into a sit. So just pressure up. There you go, release, good. Good, and hold that, good. Just like that, perfect. When I'm not around, I feel like you would still, we're doing really good, but earlier there was a mistake or earlier there was a mishap. You wanna live in the now and take deep breaths and say, hey, we're good, we're good. Try not to have an incident where you don't really know the context or the circumstances hinder your ability to move forward and progress in the future, you know? So homework would be making sure that when you're out with her that you're also setting her up for success. There's a couple times where she's gone over really close to you and she's sitting right next to you and if she had a problem with her, it would have been your fault because you gotta be mindful of that. And then even situations too, where these guys were sitting next to the water bowl and she went over. She doesn't have a problem with the people here, but you have to be mindful because if they go to reach over to a paper towel and she's drinking water here, that's a problem. So just be mindful of that because that's, that's the whole no bad dogs mentality. It would have been your fault 100% because you get a dog that doesn't really like or trust new people and can be very explosive and she's sitting inches away from these people. And now they have to sit there like this and pray to God she doesn't react. Because a lot of the things that you're working on is a very internal thing. There's times where you're like, oh shit, this is gonna be terrible and it's literally absolutely nothing to her. And that's normal and it's okay because of her breed and you wanna be responsible. So if you're not in the right headspace or if you're like, this is too much, I'm freaking out, even though she's doing good, get out of there. Because if something does happen again, it's gonna fall back on you because you're shaking like this with the dog on a leash and she's like, what's wrong? My main issue was the, the fear of the aggression that my dog was starting to show. And because of her size and the damage she could do, we needed some serious professional advice. I literally watched videos for over six months, all night long, all different types of trainers, and his methods and everything just made sense. And for the size dog that I have, I knew this was the best place to come. It's a huge difference to have somebody that's knowledgeable, share their information, and see that I, I'm capable of doing it. And it's still the positive. Yeah. Not always worry about potentially what could happen before it happens. Yeah, he yeah. eased my mind. <laughs> you know, let the fear that I was building up, I shouldn't have been letting it build up so much. And now I feel more relaxed about everything and doing anything with her. So that was a huge help. You have to be relaxed because the dog feeds off of you. How you act, your dog's not gonna act much different. So if you're not calm and relaxed and, you know, it's just, have a good day, then the dog's not going to have a good day.